Hey everyone, this is Cinny Emmy, and today I'm going to be doing a um, whipping chat. Um, this is actually going to be the second time I filmed this, um, but I have been recently watching a lot of Rachel Ray, um, the diamond painter, not the uh, <laughs> not the chef, and um, she said that she wished more people would do it because it's fun and she likes to listen to them. And I was just like, well, if I'm going to be diamond painting, might as well get videos for YouTube since I can't do my knitting ones at the moment. Um, okay, this is B. Um, and this is the second time that I'm going to be shooting this. I actually was doing a tester one that I might have put on um, YouTube. I probably would have. Um, except for the fact that I forgot the fact that my GoPro... Um, it, like, I think it's after, like, ten minutes, it, um, splits your, uh, your clips up. It doesn't, like, affect the video at all. It just splits them up so that it, I think it's, I read that it was so that it saved gigabytes or something. I don't know. Um, but I, you know, put all of my footage, I put the footage what I saw as the footage on my computer, you know, thinking I only had one video. And then I went and I noticed I had a ton of footage on my camera all the way from July till now. And I was just like, well, while it's up, why not just delete everything on there since I have it all backed up on my computer anyway? Not taking into account that I had footage on there still not backed up because it didn't even occur to me. And, uh, so yeah, I lost, I ended up with only 8 minutes of the 90 minutes I had filmed as a tester to see how this setup works. Um, I think I've been mentioning it, if anyone's seen a couple, my last couple videos. Um, I've been testing out, my brother for Christmas got me a bunch of, um, GoPro accessories, like a shocking amount of GoPro accessories. Um, my favorite so far, the headlamp, which I used, if you watch my, oh, uh -huh. um, I got like a, a circle. Hold on, see if I can get that in camera. If you can see it, it's a circle. And now I get to use this thing I did not do an unboxing for or unbagging because, um, Really, at the time, I wasn't thinking about it, and I really just wanted to get... I had ordered... Oopsie. I did that in the last video, too. I keep hitting the, the little light button. Um, I would flip it around, but the cord is in an odd spot. I got these thin um, tips for my uh, new custom diamond painting pen. And um, I... Uh, you know, I didn't really think that was something I wanted to videotape. I don't know why. I just didn't feel like it. And I'd gotten this so because it was like two bucks or something like that. It wasn't expensive. And I didn't, you know, now I get to use it. But back to the, what I was saying before, um, my brother got me an extreme amount of GoPro accessories. And I've been testing them out. And the headlamp um, is the one I used in the Twisted Stitch uh, variation, which I love that variation because... Um, my friend that asked me to do the video also does Portuguese knitting, and um, I didn't I, I didn't know that like maybe with other types of knitting, twisted stitches aren't all that hard. Um, but for us, you know, it's kind of awkward with our finger, um, which not all Portuguese knitters knit the same. I don't think, or maybe not. I don't know. I've only met me and my friend Jessica, so. In person um, that I could actually see them knit so uh, but we have a it's just really awkward with our pointer fingers when we knit to do twisted stitches and it ends up hurting really badly after a while um, so I did that that with my headlamp which my mom was like it's so shaky but I was like it's not as shaky as the ones I did for, with handheld um, and then I tried um, different handheld ones he gave me. I have one that goes on my... It's supposed to be for a backpack, but I put it on my purse. Um, I hate when they do that. Uh, <laughs> it, like, just sticks up and doesn't want to lay down. Um, 
Uh, yeah, I got one that I'm thinking of taking to a fiber festival. I have to decide if my local yarn store, because for the past, I think, year we've had a local one in town now that I've been going to, and I don't know if they're having a bus or not. I haven't been able to go to knit night for the past couple months because of um, family things and not feeling well because um, I have a lot of health issues. And... Um, I haven't been able to ask. So if they're getting a bus to Maryland Sheep and Wool, I want to go to that. If they're not, then I'm going to go to the Powhatan Fiber Festival because that one I can get my mom to drive me to since I can't really drive long distances at the moment. Um, but if I go to one of those, I'm going to use the backpack one because I can just, you know, control my GoPro from my uh, phone and have it attached to my um, have it attached to my, my purse and just, you know, vlog it while I, you know, have my hands free. But this one um, is one that clamps on the side of my table here. And the thing about it is, though, is that the one that came with uh, the stuff my brother gave me, it has a really short um, uh, arm. Thing. I don't know what it's called. It's like a wiry, metal-y thingy. Um, and when I tried doing it, the only thing I do is like so close. It had to be like right here. And I kept hitting it when I was trying to videotape things. Um, and it just, it, it, it was bothering me. And I found out you can get an attachment for it to make the arm longer. But I had to wait for that to come in. And now that it's in... This is what we have. <laughs> um, it's, I think, placed right above my pen. Like, I sometimes accidentally hit my, hit it with my pen. So if I do that, I'm sorry. Um, but it's, you know, it gets what I want it to get without, you know, bothering me. And, um, yeah. So I am doing this because it's fun. And... It's content for my YouTube channel. Um, I really wish I could do my knitting stuff, which I'm trying to. But um, with health issues and stuff, I don't feel comfortable with myself in front of the camera. Like this, you can't really see me, but you can't tell if I am feeling horrible or if, um, you know, you just can't see it. <laughs> and, you know. That, that's a good thing for me because <laughs> I don't like people seeing me sick. I can comment that I'm sick, but I don't want people to see me sick. Uh, which I've actually, I had been getting better. Um, August, I actually got a, well, June to August, I got a bunch of new doctors. I got a new pulmonologist who basically, he actually brought up malpractice in uh when he talked about my doctors from the past and the ones I currently had um, because he said I wasn't even on any of the medications I needed to be on for what I have um, and long story short is all of my doctors except for I think my OBGYN they all changed and I have doctors who are, I'm on things that I should have been on for years um, I am now on allergy shots, which they they tried before in the past, but now I have an allergist who's amazing, and he figured out how to get it so that I can have allergy shots, and I'm now for the first time ever on maintenance, um, though it's really annoying because I thought maintenance was once a month like my new B12 shot is, but uh, no, it's every other week for like a year, according to the, the nurse, um, and then I get to go on once a month. But the thing is, I can't drive myself to those because I have a, not a horrible reaction to the shot. It's, it gives me a giant adrenaline boost and then it like goes away really fast. So, um, yeah, I ended up almost getting into a car accident once. And so my dad takes me to those shot those shots so that I don't pass out on the way home. Cause you never know which ones are going to, I actually drove myself to like four or five of the shots and two or three of them didn't really affect me all that much but um 
the others did. So, you know, it just depends on a bunch of factors how much it's going to affect me. I always end up passing out. just depends on what time. Um, but, yeah. And other things that have been going on. Um, oh, yeah. So, um, I had been getting better. And then the very, very beginning of October, my um, parents, my, my grandparents have, they got like in the 70s or something, they bought for like dirt cheap this tiny little uh, cement block of a building right on the, the, um, on the beach and, uh, and here in Virginia. And it has no AC, no, no uh, heating, no internet, no really you can receive calls in you can't make calls out um you have to go all the way to the road to um get cell reception um but you have the beach um and it's like this place i love to go to as a child but um since uh my grandfather had to have brain surgery about eight years ago um my parents have been taking care of the place um, as much as they can because the, my grandparents don't like, di or didn't like change. Um, so they didn't, they didn't put any money into it. So my parents had to take care of it. They actually, at the time, were buying it from my gra my grandfather. They'd signed the papers and everything. And then they went down to, um, they're fixing the roof, I think, um, that weekend, right before October started. And... I got a very scary call, and it, it, I flashed back to seven years earlier where I um, had gotten a very similar call, but this time it was from mom instead of my dad saying that my grandfather, um, something had happened and I needed to go over there right away. Last time it was that my grandfather had, my um, paternal grandfather had, um, had like a heart attack or something on the side of the road and no one knew what was going on and I was the only one close because he was near my college driving an Enterprise car um, up to the Enterprise in Lynchburg and um, he'd been found on the side of the road and had a heart attack and he was at the hospital and he ended up dying later that night. Um, it was a very traumatic thing. I was the only one there. Um, they decided since there was a family member there that they would... Uh, stop resuscitating um it, i was 19 20 at the time it's kind of blurry uh i remember how many years ago and I, I know my age it's just i have like this block about that time except for the seeing him and ha watching him go into a uh going into shock or something i don't know i walked in the room and things started going off on his little beeper thing um but it which is very traumatic and when my mom called me, I was just like, oh, please, Lord, do not make this be like the exact same thing. Luckily, uh, he did not die that day. Uh, I got there and uh, my cousin Raya um, was there. My mom had called her, too, and she'd, like, dropped all of her groceries. She'd been at the grocery store and, like, beelined for my grandparents' house. And um, no one was answering the door. My grandmother has Alzheimer's, dementia. And... Oh, it was bad. Um, we found out she's got gotten kind of better since she's been in assisted living. Um, but when she's at home, um, she just sits in a chair and stares. She doesn't get out of her um, her dressing gown, and she was, she's just foggy. And um, basically, uh, uh, Raya talked Papa into going to the hospital. My parents were already on the way home. I had to get my grandmother to the hospital and um, my parents ended up getting there right as uh, we got to the hospital which was shocking because you know um, they were two and a half hours away uh, they must have you know broken every speeding limit to get there um, and then for the next month um, our lives were kind of revolved around Papa um, and Mama, but it was kind of, we ended up, Papa had, Papa was, is, was a stubborn Southern gentleman. He believed in, you know, he didn't believe in going to retirement communities. He's all, he always said he wanted to die at home and just bury him out in the backyard. 
Um, but he kind of realized at that point and things that had happened with Momo, like he'd fallen out of bed was what had originally happened. And like they called the emergency um, people the night before, but um, he thought he was fine and refused to go to the hospital. And then, oh, this bee um, is one of the worst out of all of them. The bee color, which is, let's see, it's 310. It's 310 is the worst out of all of these. Like some of them are perfectly shaped. Some of them are way too small or way too big. 310 seems to be way too small, almost all of them. Um, but yeah, uh, Papa realized that he, um, he couldn't take care of Mama anymore, which we kind of think that he was slipping a little bit. He'd had, you know, he's had two brain surgeries and stuff. And we don't think she was actually getting the medications she needed, or he was. Um, but he, they ended up talking. He ended up telling Mom that he wanted them to... Mama, he didn't want Mama and him separated, and he knew he was going to have to go to rehab or something afterwards. So we actually ended up getting her into a retirement facility within like a week and a half. Which was actually a big relief for the rest of the family. Because Mom and Dad were doing everything. Uh, my aunt tried to help, but wasn't much of a help um because she lives out of state and thought she could help but really if you you have to be at work you have to be at work um and you shouldn't promise things you can't do and know you can't do just because you feel like you should be helping um but uh yeah my um it, it, it took a load off my mom to know that my grandmother was, you know, being taken care of. And she got a lot better within, like, a couple hours of being there. Like, those nurses are very nice, but they don't take any crap. They won't let Mama sit around in her pajamas all day. They they have her up and dressed and bathed. That was another thing. She wasn't bathing. Um... And just, you know, she... And she's more per, uh, personable and with it now that she's not at home but um by the end of october papa had been sent well we kind of they didn't exactly say if outright that he had cancer um they they kind of stated it but didn't um but then they sent him to a rehab he was i think at the rehab for like two days before he started bleeding and they didn't know from where and, um, they sent him back to the hospital and, um, they were going to have another surgery because he'd already had one surgery. That was a very scary day. I was with my grandmother and I had had surgery, um, not really, not extensive surgery, but I had a tiny surgery, um, to remove some, um, things and, uh, and I wasn't feeling well and I had to take care I was watching my grandmother because she cannot take care of herself um, and it was just getting the call that Papa was in surgery and really seeing for the first time how bad my grandmother was because I have never I had to tell her she wasn't allowed to call my mom every five minutes and she was asking me for permission to call mom like a toddler does and it just oh my word just sitting there it just hurt, um, and they ended up, he, Papa had finally had enough, um, and they were going to have to do another surgery, and he, he said no. He said that, um, he'd had enough, he wanted to go home to heaven, and, um, he, he wanted to go home, and, um, He was out the next day back home on hospice. Luckily, we have a relative that works for a hospice company and could get everything ready. Um, the thing is, though, my other grandfather died on November 2nd. And that day, every year, because of the trauma that happened that day, to me personally, even though it, it was worse for Papa, because um, he died. I, November 2nd, what happens with me is I do not get out of my pajamas. 
I curl up in a blanket and kind of shut the world out for the day. Um, and that was what I was doing then, even though I knew Papa was pup, my this Papa was on hospice. And I also had told my mom I didn't want to be there at the end. I knew for a fact I didn't want to be there at the, at the end. I I didn't I I couldn't take it. Um, I honestly just couldn't. But uh, I got the call on November second, last of two, 2019 that uh mom was like we think you know it's gonna be today the nurse that's here right now says he's kind of entering the final stages um if you want to you know come say goodbye now would probably be the best time even though he's not really lucid i talked to some friends and basically i decided that the that I would regret it if I didn't say goodbye. Um, and yeah, he wasn't lucid. I was shaking the whole way there and I walked into that room, the, like the house, and he was in the back, but I took one look at my mom and just started sobbing. Um, I went back and I, I, I told him I loved him and I gave him a kiss. My mom was standing right next to me I swear mom does too that he, like she said he hadn't been lucid and hadn't, hadn't opened his eyes all day. But he's tried to and he, he made these like raspy noises that mom thinks was him trying to say he loved me too because that's what his response was every time someone had told him. Um, and uh, I... Uh, I, I kind of had to leave the room because he started coughing and I, and and noises and I thought I had killed my grandfather. Um, and then it got even scarier because my aunt came in the room with my mom and they started praying the um, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And it kind of sounded like chanting to me and witchy and creepy. And I went, I went as far away from the room as I could, and I just broke down. And I had to leave once Mom and them were done. I, I gave Mom a hug, and I left. And as I was pulling out of the driveway, I, my phone was up on my, um, the holder in my car. And I called my step grandmother, who is my actual—I consider her my actual grandmother, but I say step grandmother because if someone ever shows this to my actual grandmother, she will get very pissed off at the fact that I called her my actual grandmother. But she is my actual grandmother. She's loved me more than my actual grandmother ever has. She's never slapped me. She's never emotionally abused me. She is awesome. But I called Mama Sue and. I made sure she was okay and told her everything that was going on and um, I was okay until I hung up with her and then I became a basket case and barely made it home. Um, how in the world did I miss a G? Uh, let's see, G 17. Um, he ended up, I, I, I didn't tell I didn't tell mom until actually yesterday, or no, this morning, the 6th of February, um, like that my thoughts, because at the time when someone dies, uh, there are some things you just don't say. <laughs> um, it was actually the, when he died, it was like the time changed that night. Um, so he died during the first, um, 123 I think was his time of death um on the 3rd of November um but it was the first one uh so there was actually a second one and um the thing is though he waited until mom and dad had left the nurse was in the other room doing something and my aunt Cindy had gone to put on her pajamas and he waited till all of them were gone, which I think was one of the only times that he was all alone that whole time. 
to uh, pass away. And at the time, I remember thinking, um, one of my favorite Elvis songs was, um, I think it's Softly As I Leave You. It's I know it's Softly Something, but it's about um, basically waiting until everyone's gone so you don't have to watch them go. And I swear that's what he was doing. Um, because that was the only time he was alone. And he passed away. And so all of October was like, like I'd lost 30 pounds this summer. I'd finally, like with all the new doctors and all the stuff they put me on, I'd finally started losing weight and was feeling better. Between, from October till a couple weeks ago when I went to the doctor last, I've gained all of that back because I have not been emotionally, physically able to do everything that I was supposed to be doing. And now I'm starting to do those things again, but that's kind of because I'm almost, I'm not healed emotionally, but I'm, it's probably as good at the moment as I'll be able to get for a while. Um, but it was just, you know, and then trying to, be there for my mom who lost her dad um and then there was family drama always have a will before before you do anything just make sure you have a will because if you don't have a will <sighs> drama that should be people thinking they should do things they should have no right to do even if they are the children of the person that's uh, not neither here nor there um and but it's been really hard on my mom and then a couple weeks ago she gets a call from someone um, trying to find who I like to call my aunt Pam but she's actually my mom's one of my mom's college best friends who has been like I've known I'm closer to than my actual aunt um, and she wasn't at work that day because she had off, but her doctor was trying to find her because he thought her appendix was going to burst. Turns out it wasn't, but she has cancer. And, um, she's, she was very, she was in denial for a very long time. Um, just the other day she ended up having to have surgery, uh, to remove her appendix because apparently there was a cancer membrane all around her appendix. And my mom had, has to take her to all her doctor's appointments. Um, she's actually recuperating at a friend's house right now. Uh, but she's actually going to be here in a couple days. Because mom has to take her to another doctor's appointment. Um, so mom takes her to all her doctor's appointments. And, you know, it's an added stress on my mom that she doesn't really need. Because she's also... I'm not really taking care of my grandmother, but because my grandmother's an assisted living facility, but she's she's taking care of the house and she's taking care of the cottage and she's taking care of everything Mama needs. But at the same time, Mama doesn't remember half the stuff that's going on and can't take care of herself. I mean, if she's not reminded that she, she hasn't been to the bathroom in a while, she wets herself and she gets very uncomfortable with people around. She has this thing that Alzheimer's and dementia patients have um, called sundowning, which means after, like, n once the sun goes down, she gets antsy and irritable, um, which we, I found out about at the, uh, not the funeral, but at the, um, the wake or whatever it's called afterwards, she scared one of my cousins, um, so badly, he was, like, freaked out because she was screaming that we that we were being really loud when we were just quietly talking to each other. We just happened to be in the same room. Um, and she just, you know, she doesn't like people around. She doesn't like noise. Um, she just wants to sit quietly in her chair, not doing what the doctors say, which is to stimulate her brain so it doesn't go downhill fast, and it's going downhill fast. She, uh, one of our cousins, I think Meredith, went and 
made her go to bingo the other night and she won three times and the next day she had no memory at all of being at bingo or winning or seeing the people. Uh, and she'll tell you, I'd never win anything. Uh, her go-to phrase when she can't remember something is, and wants to pretend like she knows what we're talking about is, oh, I read about that in the paper. She did not. Um, and then like a couple, like an hour or so later, she'll tell us a story that's basically something we've already told her. Uh, but as if, you know, it happened to someone else. And she'll tell us this story as if it like happened to her or something. And it's just, it's sad and depressing. Whew. Yeah, that was, that was just a very depressing conversation. Um, but oh yeah, so diamond painting. So, <laughs> from after my papa died, um, was Christmas. Um, and my mom got me. Every year she tends to get me something that, um ends up costing me a lot of money because it comes becomes something that I, you know, spend a lot of money on. Uh, she got me a silhouette one year, and I use that all the time, but it cost a ton of money to get the stuff to do that. And um, it just, every year, something that, you know, she gets me that's not expensive, that she doesn't think is going to be a big gift. And it does. This year it was diamond painting. She got me, um, if you look on my page, there's an elephant painting. And I love that thing. I just need to take a toothbrush to it because it was a round painting. So I have eczema. So it um, got my skin cells all in the sticky stuff. Um, and I've kind of gotten... Well, I am spoiled with the diamond paintings because all the ones, except for the one I'm going to do next, are all uh, poured glue. Um, but once I first got I watched all these videos Christmas uh, Day on how to do it. And I was going to wait. But then, you know, I just had to start it. And I got addicted within a couple minutes. Um, when I went to go look for the next one I wanted to do, which my mom thought was kind of silly because she's like, what are you going to do with all these paintings? We can't, we don't have enough room to hang them up. I was like, I don't know, but I want to keep doing them. Um, I actually have a plan for all my paintings right now. It's after that. I don't know. <laughs> um, but I had researched and looked. If you watch my video, I was kind of very stressed out when I did the video for Pupal's painting. Because it nothing had gone the way it was supposed to. Um, I wanted, because I didn't know at the time that you're supposed to kind of have a backup, or not a backup, but like you, you're supposed to order them way in advance so that you know, because it takes a while to get them. And I had been looking. I didn't. I wanted a square one. Um, because I I didn't really like round. They're okay, but I I just wanted to do a square um and I couldn't find one I liked on Etsy at the time so I went on or Amazon I couldn't find one on Amazon which is where mom got mine um so I went on Etsy and I clicked on United States only and I clicked on two-day shipping the painting I got was from Neither. um but I found, I, I, I found this one I fell in love with. It was a sailboat. And anyone who knew my grandfather knew he, he just loved sailboats. It was like, every, what I, when I think of him, I think of sailboats. Um, my way of kind of mourning my grandfather and being helpful and staying out of the way. Because I knew I, there's nothing I could do to help my mom and them with Popo. I am not good with those types of things. And I knew I would be in the way. So I helped watch my mom. And I took, went, searched the house for photos and I scanned them. I scanned over 3,000 photos, edited those photos. My way of mourning was I went to film school, so I know how to use film programs. Um, and I created a 30-minute long funeral video 
I then had to shorten it because they actually wanted it to be in the actual funeral. Um, and I, they, people only ended up seeing the eight minute long one, but um, I went through all of those photos and it was just shocking because again, my grandfather had had like two or three brain surgeries and he was sharp as a tack at the end. Like he knew everything that was going on. The thing is though, that because of the brain surgery, I hadn't really, I'd been at college at the time and didn't really realize how much things had changed. But the last eight Christmases, all of the pictures are the same. The only thing re, way you can tell the difference is by the shirt Papa's wearing. Both Mama and Papa have been in their rocking chairs, opening their presents. Before then, Papa was on the floors floor with us. He was, he at eighty some years old could lift a uh, um, a boat. My uh, my my dad had to do something on the. He used to have a jet ski. He got it like on sale, like um, the Coast Guard or something was selling one. And uh, he needed to do something. And Papa at 80 some lifted that thing all on his own. He was strong as an ox. And sorry, my phone's going off. Um, he just, um, he was very active. He did not believe in just sitting around, uh, but that's all they did. Um, after his brain surgery, he couldn't, it took, it takes a long time for him to get words out. So you have to wait a little while, but he would, you know, he get it out. Um, but it's, it's easy to remember that when after years and years of the same thing, you don't remember. Um, I found so many pictures, but one, the ones I love the most are the ones, um, there was one birthday. All of us had, uh, birthdays around the same time. Well, not all of us, but my grandfather, my cousin Andy and I, and my mom, um, all, well, my mom had a birthday at the very end of June, um, but the rest of us had our birthdays in July. Andy and Papa's birthdays are actually the same exact day. Um... But, uh, he, for one birthday, we all celebrated together, and he had us all in, everyone in the family, in these bright red, uh, shirts with a white sailboat that said Al's Mariah, which my mom didn't actually know until the funeral that Al's Mariah, she thought it was named after him and his, uh, mother, because her name was Mariah. But he didn't, she didn't take into account the fact that his father's name was also Alfred. So Al's Mariah was actually named after both his parents. But when I think of my papa, that's what I think about. is that sailboat. The sailboat that I was like five or six years old. I wore these stupid platform foam shoes and lost them. And then a year later, they were picked up by a sail, like a... A sailboat nearby who knew the story of what had happened to my shoe so I ended actually I actually ended up getting the shoe back um, but every summer we would go out on that boat and I'd love to stand on go into the cabin underneath of it and get up on the um, the ladder and stand up at the very top um, in the very front of the boat and look at the waves as they came as we went through them it was just, it, it was so much fun. And I saw this sailboat painting and I just couldn't stop looking at it. And I was just like, I need to make, that needs to be the first one I, I physically buy myself. I need that painting. But I didn't, I, I didn't want to just buy it willy nilly. So I, I did research. I should have done more. I, uh, though I don't think I could have, you know, in my video, I was really kind of really disappointed and upset at the time that I was filming it. So I just kind of was just talking. And I, uh, there's, I think I, I corrected myself in words in it. But basically, I didn't and I did think about the glue. Um, I thought about it kind of at the beginning. But basically, I had seen reviews that had 
on Etsy that said that they had poured glue. So once I saw a couple of them that said that, I didn't think about it again. But I had been looking for that. Um, but I didn't actually see anything on the physical listing that said poured glue or double-sided tape. But I had made sure that it was from America. <laughs> and I had made sure that it was quick shipping. Both were lies. Um, it had very, very good reviews. And a couple bad ones. But I took that as a good sign. Because if you only have good reviews, that's kind of not actually a good sign in most cases. Um, so I went ahead and bought it. And then it said it shipped the next day. And then I looked at the tracking and it said China. And I was like, okay. And then it was stuck in China for weeks. And I had the itch to do a um, diamond painting. So I, you know, was just randomly looking on Amazon and found this painting that I'm working on from Star Ore that I like, but the diamonds are inconsistent. I like the painting a lot. If the light isn't under it, you can't really tell that the diamonds are... Um, oh, these, man, in the, in the camera I can see these three tens are just... Oh, inconsistent. Um, it, uh, yeah, but I was just so, like, and so I got this, and then there was this painting, which at the time I did, when I was doing the unboxing, and even when I bought it, I wasn't really try I wasn't thinking about why I kind of wanted it or liked it, but now that I've had time to stare at it and think about it, I'm pretty sure the reason I, I liked it is because it reminds me of my friend Sky, who's a redhead. Um, and hopefully she's not watching this, but I'm thinking that's going to be her Christmas present. Usually I knit her something. Um, but her birthday and Christmas are so close together. Her birthday was actually yesterday, the 5th. Um, I think she'll be shocked to... Uh, Hold on, I'm moving my cell phone because it's how I see what I'm recording, but it's starting to die. <laughs> um, yeah, um, she'll be okay with only one knitted item. <laughs> uh, but I just kept waiting. Like, both this painting came, the Diamond Art Club painting. I mean, that took a little while to get here, but, um,. It even got here, in my opinion, fast. But that other painting just kept saying, you know, and that it was in China. Beijing, to be exact. Um, and uh, I just kept thinking, this, this painting that means so much and I wanted to do in honor of my grandfather, it actually is going to, if I finish it. Um, I'm going to put it in my grandmother's room. And assisted living because her, her walls are kind of bare. My mom's trying to add things. She actually wants me to do a video on how to do this uh, St. Patrick's Day um, uh, wreath that she did. From, my mom's really into it at the moment doing wreaths for my mom's door to make it to, to give it a little sparkle and personality so it's not exactly all the same. And um you know, this it, this will give her something to look at to think of Papa. Um, if she thinks about him, because like a week after she died, I mean, I, oh, like a week after he died, my my mama, mama was like, I don't know why you're going to so much trouble. He's been gone a year. He'd only been gone like a week. Uh, she swears that he was in the, um, that she and him stayed at the assisted living facility together in the beginning. <laughs> Um, they did not. Um, but you can't tell her that. But yeah, that's, but when it came, I was just, I was just praying that it was not double-sided tape because I've heard horror stories. I hadn't actually heard them before I got the, um, before I bought the painting. I've heard some horror stories now. Um, and I'm not looking forward to working on that thing. I 
think it's going, but it's going to be now my next one. I actually was going to do skies next, but if double-sided tape gets worse the longer you let it sit, I'm going to do that once I finish this, which I should be done soon. Um, I only have this section up here left. But I'm just really upset that a painting that I got to honor someone I love a lot is probably going to cause me more stress than I want. That was cheery. That was a very long, cheery conversation, wasn't it? Let's see. Something that's not all that depressing. Knitting. Um, I have, a, like, in December, I had, like, an inspiration. Some, uh, there's someone who, uh, does yarn uh, that I follow. Um, I love the TV, or the Twitch show. Um, that was not the right place, but who cares? Uh, Critical Role. It's a Dungeons and Dragons thing. I love Dungeons and Dragons. I have an online group that I play with. Um, that I actually have this Sunday. We're having a online thing. Um, I play a elf um, sorcerer named Ashling, named after a friend of mine. And um, the TV show, my, uh, the the lady uh, dyes yarn uh, based on Dungeons and Dragons. And there was this uh, character. Um, ooh, I already had. <laughs> I was looking for the diamond like I thought it had fallen and it was already on there. Uh, there's one episode and it was talking about this character called the Rizdoon. He's this big, basically big, bad, evil dude. Um, and I saw this knitting pattern that looked, um, like, like the stitch that made it look like there were chains and in the knitted object and I loved it and I automatically th thought of Therizdun because he's known as the chained oblivion because he's chained and can't you know come out he's trying to unchain himself uh, but so far that's not working too well for him and I was just like I need to make this into some socks <laughs> and call him Therizdun socks so I'm designing those. I, I had knit almost to the heel. And then um, I had made some mistakes because, you know, you, sometimes you can't exactly have a stitch pattern work, work out 100%. So you have to change the stitches around and make them work for you. Um, and I tried four different ways until I finally found the way I like. But the thing is, though, I changed them in the sock, and I'm a little OCD about some things, like, um, paper. If someone, if I get, like, a crinkle in the paper, I hate it. I have to, like, start all over. Um, I, I, uh, am the worst about if there are mistakes in my knitting Unless I've gotten, like, I don't notice until, like, near the very end, I have to frog back and restart it or fix it or whatever because it will bother me. I'm one of those people that that's all I will see. Um, even though my knitting's not perfect, it's just, it, if it's a mistake that's so obvious that I, my brain tells me I, it needs to be fixed, I have to go fix it. Um, and I just, I couldn't... My brain was just like, this is not going to look good in pictures. This is not what we want. It needs to be nice. Um, you're working so hard to design this that you, it needs to be perfect. Um, so I had to frog it. And I'm almost back to where I was. And they, they look better than they did before. Um, but it's just, you know, I, uh, I'm designing those socks. And then I went to... Um, well, actually, before then... Nathan Taylor, he's known as the Sock Matician on Instagram and YouTube. He's coming out with a double knitted brioche book soon that I uh, was one of the Kickstarters for. Um, and I have a bunch of hat patterns in mind to design, you, but you can't really design them until um, until you get the book so you know how to do the pattern. 
but I have a, a couple blanket, like scrappy blanket ideas um, that I have been playing around with. And then the other day I went to the Scan Cocaine trunk show. I've been obsessed with Scan Cocaine, even though I haven't gotten any of her yarn um, for a long time, because even though I went to Liberty University, the rest of my family went to Virginia Tech. Um, like my whole life, it was Virginia Tech this, Virginia Tech that. I am a little bit bitter that I didn't get to go, but they didn't have a film school, and that is what I wanted to study. Um, and she, the Skin Cocaine lady, lives in Blacksburg, and you know, I just, I just think she's awesome. And I actually, there was, I, I follow, okay, before the yarn store in my town opened up, there the, the closest yarn store. Uh, that I knew of, uh, it turns out there's another one, um, was Dances with Wool, which is in Mythlodian. And, uh, it's kind of a trek for us. So, and, so, so we only go, like, once or twice a year. Um, because they have really nice yarn there. And I really like the atmosphere. Um, but actually, like, I saw last year that she was going to have a trunk show. And I went on that day, and somehow, no trunk show. Um. I saw another one this year, and I kept checking, and on the day, I made sure that she was going to be there, and I made my mom get there, like, right at the very beginning, and I was only going to get one skein of sock yarn to uh, use for one of the designs that I have recently been thinking about making socks for, but then she also had this DK weight yarn that, um, it's not on Ravelry yet, but it has nylon in it, and I have this idea for some DK weight socks um, that look like woven fabric and I was like oh this would be perfect and so I ended up getting two skeins and then my mom um, she saw a uh, shawl that she actually thought was like a capelet um, she's going to use her um, her shawl pin to make it into a capelet once I'm done making it um, that was actually a mystery knit along. And see, the thing is my mom, she's supportive with knitting and stuff and wants me to knit things for her, but she's not the most enth enthusiastic. Like she doesn't really understand my love for yarn or really any of my hobbies. She'll smile and, but then she'll like make a comment like, why in the world do you want to do that? Or you really sure that's something you want to do? And, um, but she saw the thing and fell in love and she's like, I want you to make that for me. And I was like, if you buy the yarn, I'll make it for you. She ended up getting four skeins of Malabrigo in very pretty colors. Um, but she was a little upset because I ended up having a $5 off coupon. And she was going to save it for me. And then it turns out I couldn't use the $5 uh, off coupon for um, the trunk show. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, she could have gotten $5 off. <laughs> but that's actually not the first time that's happened. Last time we were there... She ended up doing the exact same thing. Um, but I made her something out of all of that yarn that we bought last time, too. So, all of this yarn will be used as well. But, uh, yeah, that was... Mom was like, Dad's gonna kill me. <laughs> I was like, well, at least she'll have a pretty shawl out of it. But, yeah. And I, uh, I came out of that and went home... And, um, I took out all of my stitch dictionaries and I had pulled them out and I just had went through all of them and pulled out design or all these different stitches and was just like, Ooh, this would make good socks. I have 12 different stitch ideas for socks now. Um, the thing I'm worried about is though, I don't consider myself technically a designer even though I'm designing a pair of socks but I like have this fear that I'm gonna work this hard to make these socks and then um someone else is gonna have something similar and they're gonna think I stole it like I'm doing math and stuff and I used to like math not stitch math I like regular math uh, I'm not good at it but I like math um and to I just have this fear that someone's gonna you know, say I steal stuff when I don't. <laughs> um, 
So it's, I, I, I don't want to, like, oh, Kay from the Bakery Bears Knitting Podcast. She made these socks, and uh, someone told her one of her patterns was very similar to another pattern, so she didn't release it because she um, felt bad doing that, even though it wasn't exactly the same pattern. I have a uh, one-stitch pattern that I loved, and then I was like, hey, doesn't this kind of look like a sock I've made before? And it does look similar, but it's made with, uh, like, this one doesn't have yarn overs and stuff. Um, that's not how the little holes are made. Um, and doesn't have knit three togethers and things, whereas the one that I have um, does, or doesn't, I can't remember which. I don't have the pattern right in front of me. Um, but yeah, I've got a lot of ideas, and I just hope people like them. <laughs> gotten a lot of likes on Instagram but I don't like to judge things by likes because you know just because someone likes something doesn't mean they actually like it like I've liked a lot of things that I don't actually like because um, if I, well you never know what a like means it might be oh this looks pretty I'm gonna like this or something like that gotten a lot of people that have saved my um, shop updates on Instagram and then didn't buy anything the day of the update so you know you never know they could just you know save it because they might want to look but they don't plan on buying but uh, I'm terrified of looking for testers because one of the ladies uh, at knit night has some horror stories about working with testers and you just never know if they are testing for you just to get a free pattern and then not actually do the work or if they're you know if they're actually in it for the right reasons because a lot of people do the testing just to you know get a free pattern but don't actually do the work to earn the free pattern Ooh, I do enjoy this. Let's see, what else has been going on? Ooh, um, one of my friends has been doing this drink called Kirkle. Kirk, hold on. C-I-R-K-U-L, and it's like flavored water. But it's like a, you put the water in the bottle and it flavors it. But it doesn't have any, like, sugar... Or calories or stuff in it and she's lost a lot of weight drinking it and they had this sale for um, what's usually $20 to get the test um, kit they only had had you only had to pay $5 and so I was like well $5 no shipping I'm good with that so I test I tried it and I loved it and I'm supposed to drink I have uh, one of my doctors is making me keep track of all the water I drink and I'm supposed to drink I don't know the exact number, but it's like three 32-ounce bottles of water a day with all the medications and stuff I have to take. Um, and she, uh, and uh, it kind of, it really helps because I have, I do drink a lot of soda, but that was mainly because with all my medications and stuff, I'm tired. Like, all the time and I need the caffeine and stuff and I've tried other things to give me the energy to function because I don't function like a normal person and I know that um like I if I could I probably would sleep all day every day because I just don't have the energy to function um and I want to function. I want to do things. And so uh, I, you know, been doing the, I had until my grandfather got sick, um, been keeping up with it, even though I didn't really like it because I don't like the taste of most waters. I have to drink bottled water because filtered or the tap water makes me feel weird. Um, one of my doctors told me that that's actually normal for some people. Like they react to something that's in the water. Um, so I have to drink bottled water. I feel bad about because everyone's all about the environment and stuff. And I have to physically drink bottled water or I get rashes and stuff. 
and tum tummy aches and things. Um, and this actually helps a lot. I still can't drink tap water, but I mean, I, I can at least have a nicely flavored drink. I still have to use a little bit of soda to take my medicine because I can't use water because it feels like, ah, uh, I need more patty wax. Um, I can't, uh, use water to take my pills with because it, it, it feels like I'm choking. Um, whereas with soda, it feels, I don't notice it at all. And if you're taking giant horse pills, you need something to make sure that you're taking them correctly. But the, I, um, so I got the tester and it was fruit punch and, which I love the fruit punch one. And I think, um, I know it wasn't grape, but it was something close to that. Uh, and I love both of them. So I got the, uh, I think it was eight kit. I think I'm going to have to go up to the 16 at some point. Um, because I go through one a day. <laughs> uh, but today's was strawberry watermelon. No, strawberry banana. I think strawberry watermelon is a different day. Um, and oh my word, it's so good. I mean, it doesn't taste, it tastes like them enough that I enjoy it. But it, it also tastes kind of like a candy version. But not enough that it's like so sweet annoying flavored it's just like the right amount and the thing I like is that you can change how much you taste like if you don't like the flavor a ton but you like it like a little bit um, you can just you know um, you know you can lower it and if you really really like the flavor and want more of it you can bump it all the way up but you get less you, it lasts not, it doesn't last as long as if you do that, but, and that tends to be what I do because I do enjoy the flavors. Except for, I like the fruit punch one, but like regular fruit punch, it makes my throat hurt after a while. I'm actually running low on these. Do I have another, I think I have another thing of, yes, I do have another baggie. I think I'm going to go all the way until I hopefully finish this and then stop diamond painting for the evening and work on my mom's um, grapes. I got some patterns recently. thing is that when you get these, uh, I've been trying, I love 3D beading, but 3D beading involves a lot of beads I don't already own. Beads are expensive. Like people want me to lower the prices on my Etsy site. The thing is though, they're glass beads. They're expensive glass beads and they use a lot in those beading patterns and it takes time to make those things and I can't lower them. There's actually, I have a, um, a 3D football that I did for the Super Bowl. Um, I'm actually using them right now as earrings. Um, but it has over a thousand size 15 which is the lowest size i can work with and most people can work with i think there's actually um i know none of the sites that i i buy from um have any lower sizes um of beads but i know you can get lower sizes it's like the higher the number is the smaller they are size 11 is the most common size people use um and i have a lot of those but um Size 15s are what the earring size of the football is, and it's over a thousand beads, and they're all glass, and you have to go very slowly, or they break, because they're glass, and you can only put so much pressure on them before they will break, and I make little footballs that are 3D, and those things, I felt so guilty. I think I put them up for $18. I, my dad's an accountant, well, he was an accountant before he retired. And we call him Spreadsheet Man, which we've always teased him about. But once I started my business, I keep a spreadsheet. I have, like, how many, how much the beads cost me to buy each one. I have, um, so I know how much it costs to physically make. 
um, how many be I have a, a section for how many beads are in the pattern, how many different colors, and I put some of that information on the um, on the, the listing so people can know why they're priced the way they are. Though I lowered my prices like a couple months ago because people were complaining so much, but I'm like between Etsy and the cost of making them, I only make like 50 cents now on them. The rest of the money goes towards the supplies. So I don't make much on them. <laughs> and I had to put the, the earrings at like 18 because I would, I'm only, I think I only, would only make like 25 cents if I, um, at that price. Because Etsy takes off. When you put the listing up, they take off for each item that's sold. They have like a transaction fee. And then they take you take your money for shipping too. <laughs> and it's just a lot of money. And then they want us to do, if someone does over spends over a certain amount of money, we have to give them free shipping now or we don't get... Um, or stuff seen on Etsy and that's just I feel as if that's kind of it's kind of wrong they say that people buy more if they see free shipping and yeah that can be true but some of us try and give the people the lowest shipping prices we can give them sorry um already and taking the money out and they say just up your prices and I'm like my prices are as you know people are already you know complaining about the prices um and I have them I have my charms like one at a time because they originally made for knitters um because that's what I use them for I use a ton of my own stuff and if I actually sell out of some of the things, I will even, like, change the findings on them. Um, like, I had someone comment on my hedgehog that I put up today. And um, I almost put, yeah, I've sold out a couple times because this is my most popular design. And ended up selling the one I have. Um, like, every time I make a ton of them, I'll then make one specifically for myself. Even though the hedgehogs are made in the small beads they, that are more expensive and they're a pain in the butt to bead, but they make, they're make they so beautiful when they're done. Um, I, uh, I need more beads. Um, I almost said that, said that uh, I, uh, you know, have sold my own stitch markers to, uh, or giving people my own stitch markers, but that kind of sounds like I'm like, um, giving them to people, but sometimes like I sell them in person. I actually have sold a ton more in person than I have on Etsy. I'm going to put some of these away. Nah, I'll keep them. Um, uh, I sell, I've sold a lot more in person than I have on Etsy. So, like, I think on Etsy it says I only have, like, 40 or 40 some sales. But if you add the ones in person, it's closer to 100 um, people, not items. It's way more than that because some people, a lot of people buy them in fours because they like to buy two sets of earrings. Um, but one of my friends was like, why don't you just sell them in, in twos so that people feel like they're getting a... A better deal and I was like I already have a, a code that if they want to buy them in twos it'll take money off but I don't want you know knitters to have to you know it's geared towards knitters um, but it is what it is I'm not gonna complain I love my job because it, it allows me to work from home when I don't feel well and every time I go outside the house I end up sick which is not a fun thing to have happen. I am totally going to have to take a toothbrush to this thing to clean it when I'm done, but I'm okay with that. I am so close to the end of this.
and then I have to start the icky thing. I can already see, like, since I did my video, I have had the um, sailboat painting laid out flat, and I can already see it, like, developing um, air pockets or whatever they're called in the in the painting, and I'm just like, you evil bastard. Oh yeah, and then like the, um, I know I mentioned in my video or whatever, but like within an hour of me getting um, the painting and me doing the video, I went on to get, because I, I, I'll record a lot of videos. Some I don't put up because I hate how I sound in them. <laughs> I second guess myself all the time. I have like over 25 videos on my computer that are never going to see the light of day. And... But I, I put all the information at the time of recording so that when I go go to edit them or if, if I, you know, want to put them up later, I have the information to, you know, tag the people and stuff. And I went to go look and I couldn't find the company anywhere. So I went to my, um, my sale thing where I had the tracker and clicked on it and says, oops, we don't know what you clicked on or whatever it is that Etsy puts up. And I Googled them couldn't find any record of them ever existing. The only record I can find of them existing is my order. And that's just sketchy as all get out. And done! All I have left is this section here. And I will be done. This has been a very long video. I am gonna go and relax and maybe take a nap. <laughs> I'll see y'all later. This has been Sunny Emmy wishing you a lovely day and God bless.